So I'm Jan Lübbe, I'm from Pengotronics and we do embedded stuff on ARM. So that's a little bit different background, I think, than most of us here. So the perspective is perhaps a bit different. So um, I'm going to talk about LabGrid first to give you a bit of a background and then talk about what I'm trying to do with uh, integration with, with kernel CI. And then I have some uh, description of what I did as an example and we can have a discussion. So LabGrid is a hardware control framework or lab control framework. So you have many boards and racks and ARM-based systems. You have zero console networking, GPIOs, USB, whatever. And you want to control them from your development PC or from automated uh, testing, maybe in GitLab, on, GitLab or something like that. And we also want to have low level bootstrapping capability because yeah, when you let developers work with these devices, they tend to break the bootloader or something like that. And so we need to be able to automatically recover them to get them back to a yeah, defined state. Otherwise, yeah, automated tests make no, no sense if you don't know your baseline. So um, LabGrid has basically three layers. We have resources, which just describe which hardware is connected to the device and how to access them. So like a serial console in this case. And then we have drivers written in Python, which talk to these resources and give a high level API where you can you know, use Python code to control them. In this case, send characters, receive characters, and you can layer those drivers to build more, yeah, more, more useful interface, for example, which know how to talk to a Linux shell or bootloader shell. So you don't need to repeat that into, in your um, test cases. And then um, these high level drivers implement protocols, or you could call them APIs, which are standardized across some classes of drivers. So both bootloaders and shells know how to execute commands and return the output. And if you have lots of diverse devices, in your labs, you need to configure these drivers somehow because they know need to know, for example, what prompt to match and so on. And we do this configuration in YAML. So you can define resources explicitly, or I come later to that over the network. And then you have drivers which have configuration like, uh, yeah, what, what is the prompt, which username or password do I need to log in? That basically encapsulates all the information I need to know to let a test suit run against a given device. So in most cases, I don't have all this hardware connected directly to my uh, machine where I'm logged in or in, in, in the CI client. So I have some set of clients. Those connect to a LabGrid coordinator, which knows which resources exist in my, my lab. And those resources are exported by exporters. So an exporter has, for example, devices which implement a power, power protocol or console protocol digital outputs or GPIOs or bootstrap, for example, the NXP chips have a protocol via USB where can, I can upload the bootloader, the rock chip SOCs have something similar, but it's all vendor dependent. So, and in this case, um, well, in our lab, we have like uh, 150 boards by now and they grouped into places. So all these interfaces that are connected to the boards are grouped into places so yeah we can take a board out reuse a place for something different and so they get names in the exporter and the targets are connected to these yeah interfaces on the exporter so with that in the background i can write test cases in simple python with labgrid as a library and execute commands uh, interpret the results and uh, yeah, have basic regression tests on systems which basically run the software that is actually also shipped on those devices. So we are not using any test runners on the devices itself, they are just remotely controlled. So the abstraction level we have in these tests is usually what I want to, uh, what I would tell a colleague to do if they want to use uh, a manual test. So I tell them, yeah, run HW clock, wait a bit, take a look at the result and uh, either the test is okay or not. So uh, for kernel CI, our goal with this is basically um, 
the remaining issues we see in the field is not so much in the generic code because we have lots of very nice testing frameworks. Um, we have the zero day, we have um, Syscola and so on, which find most of the hardware independent bugs before we see them. So we basically want to do something similar for diverse hardware and run those on real hardware without mocking. So what's missing there is basically the set of brand new kernels built by kernel CI. They built from many vendor, uh, many maintainer branches, they built next. So every day I get dozens of new kernels with a uh, few interesting changes that I want to test on the real hardware. So I need to basically go to kernel CI, find the interesting kernels, download them, run them on my hardware and maybe feedback uh, the results. And it's also an, an interesting incentive for our customers to get a uh, normal dev config worker on their board because that enables all this work. So it, yeah, it should help get them to the level where they run mainline kernels on their boards because then they can be benefit from automatic regression testing. So basically the work that I want to do is filter kernel CI builds that are interesting to that hardware, download those kernels, in a drumfs and so on, device trees, deploy them on the device with the existing interfaces via USB, via network, whatever is actually supported by that hardware, and then compare the results with some mainline known baseline that, that works well. So for example, I did a test with a BeagleBone. It's connect, connected to one of our exporters. So it's just connected to um, USB for power and um, Android Fastboot, so to upload a kernel and uh, has a serial console. And on the other side, it's, it has an uplink via um, network, which also powers the whole setup. So again, I have a YAML configuration, which tells LabGrid how to control that board and how to move it to, into different states. So basically how to install a kernel and boot to shell. So I can yeah, automate that with a generic test suite to run basically the same tests on many boards. Yeah, so in my simple test case, I run in this case, the LMBatch uh, pipe latency. And interestingly, it seems that uh, performance uh, has increased, so latency has decreased between 5.4 to 6 zeros RC something. So that's something I need to look at, but uh, if it is true, that would be nice. But uh, yeah, that was simply a re result of, of the uh, test run I did. Yeah, of course, I have open questions, otherwise I wouldn't be here. So. Is kernel CI interested in, in results like this from maybe from boards that are not mainline? So should they just be submitted and under which names? Uh, yeah, that's a very good question. <laughs> um, the issue with submitting results for boards that are not uh, available to the public is uh, if someone sees uh, the results, it, uh, something is failing, um, only you would be able to fix it, for example. So it's not very useful in that uh, sense, or it's a bit uh, misleading or you know, it's compli complicating things. So, however, it's possible to have, um, um, to submit results like a, a project we've been working on with Nikolai SKCIDB, which is a, like a, another a bigger superset database where we can send any type of result if you want. Um, so that way, at least, um, it wouldn't be advertised in the same way as the, um, as the native kernel CI stuff. Um, but it would still be useful to know that on some platforms, some tests are failing, because then if you if you provide the logs, maybe people can see why it's failing, and maybe some other platforms somewhere that you don't know about will be able to reproduce the issue. So I think that's probably a good way to, to yeah. deal with it. I think it would be nice to, to be able to see the correlation between changes in performance or in functionality, even if yeah, the yeah. platform is not in mainline. Yeah, uh, yeah, and I'm not sure the unobtainable platforms are a real issue. I mean, like I know I've got boards in my lab that you can't get anymore because they're old and they're out of production. And 
uh, you, you know, there's things you uh, you can order, you can actually order, but they cost an arm and a leg, and nobody's going to order them. Blah blah blah. I, I, I don't see the obtainability as being an issue. Um, I mean, yeah, one of the reasons, if one of the issues is, for example, if you do an automated by section and you send a report to someone saying your commit broke this platform that nobody else can access, then it's a bit awkward for the person who receives the the, the bug report. Okay. That's a kind of issue. <laughs> Sure, but I mean, that, that's going to happen. <laughs> that, that, uh, that, that's going to happen uh, anyway. Um, you know, pe people just w w not everybody has every piece of hardware. It, it, to me, I, uh, like to me as a kernel maintainer, I don't really care if I could actually go out and buy this Intel laptop that somebody's broken the audio for or not, because I'm not spending a thousand pounds on a laptop because of some kernel bug. Go away. Um, and the fact that you know, if it's an important somebody won't tell me, that's not really materially different to me. Yeah, that's completely true. At least it's possible. The other one is not turned on. Um, <laughs> at least it's possible to find a platform somewhere, like you know, sharing or asking someone to submit uh, a new test with the patch. But I mean, yeah, that's one of the things, I suppose. I mean, if it's real like confidential hardware, maybe you won't even be able to share the logs. I don't know. <laughs> So, yeah. so basically, the summary is it would be useful in KC IDP, but probably not in, in the existing formats. <laughs> okay, so what I'm hearing is, yeah, you want to report to kernel CI. Really, the what you what the goal is to get maintainers' attention, correct? So one thing. You can report it to, through kernel CI, or you could report it if you were to run these tests, say on the stable releases. Don't know if you're doing that, so you could report it there. Say for for example, the performance test that you talked about right there, you are seeing performance improvement. Great, but what if it re go, becomes regression? So in regression, um, uh, regression lists is another place. Lore has regression lists. So you could, if you saw any regressions, you could report it there. Really, the goal, goal I'm guessing here is for you by looking to put it at the report result to kernel CI is really getting communities' attention to the problems you're seeing. Yeah, I, I think that's one part. And with something like um, um, Tux built, I think we could also easily automate the bisection locally. So if we know how exactly the kernel CI kernels are built and can reproduce that exactly, that would be very useful. So yeah, on a, on a performance change like this, it should be pretty easy to run a bisection test. I have a question for you. Do you have some logic already in place for detecting when there's uh, do you have some logic in place already for automatically detecting when there's uh, a performance regression? No. You just look at the results by hand, yeah. So so this, this is the uh, result of a few few days of hacking. So it basically adapts the, the kernel CI API to get the kernels and just two hundred lines of Python to talk to LabGrid and uh, run the tests on, on local boards. But it's yeah. In, at that level, it's a proof of concept. So if you'd be interested in submitting those results to KCIDB, uh, you would need to find out how the bills you're using are identified in KCIDB, and uh, I think Guillaume can help with that. And then you just generate some JSON and send it off to throw a pipe to a command. And that's basically it. Like yeah. You just need to refer to those builds in the files they just send in, and these these will join the results in KCIDB. Yeah, I know the the object IDs in case uh, kernel CI. So I, I don't know if they're exactly that in KCIDB, but they are should be pretty close. Yeah, but are, are there other use cases features where, where something like this might be useful? As so basically, yeah, automating running. KCI, uh, kernel CI kernels on custom hardware on a lab? Well, I'm kind of more interested, sorry, I'm not going to answer your question. <laughs> I'm kind of more interested in the protocol that you used to, to get the kernels from, and, and the kernel-related artifacts from kernel CI, and if we could possibly standardize that 
on that across the industry. Um, I think you probably doesn't want that because that's the old API. Oh, is it? Oh, okay. Well, so actually, you know, it is getting standardized with a new API. You get, a, you get an event when there's a new build, for example. You get an event when anything gets sent to the database, for example. Well, it's not the events as much as like the JSON. I mean, are there, are there uh, like, have you guys talked to TuxMake to see if like the, the metadata that you put in your JSON is the same for kernel CI as it is for TuxMake or? Uh, I did look at the data initially that they had. I think it doesn't really matter if it's not exactly the same as long as um, as long as it's possible to machine read it and it has all the information inside that that's needed. Uh, there's I think there's going to be some uh, design differences between TuxMake and the new API that means it's difficult to have exactly the same thing coming from the API. But we could easily have a bridge in between something that receives events and submits events again with uh, the format that's like. For the same as TuxMake, if that. Okay, happens. so let me let me do my big ask. Can you upstream that to like the kernel make files, the creation of the metadata? Um, well, it's not really, well, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think that's there, there's a few steps I think we have to go through before we get there. But yeah. Thanks for all the team to help with that. <laughs> yeah, but. Uh, a case ADP gets built both from Tux, Tux Suite and uh, Kernel CI. So, in principle, we can work on uh, getting plugging in there and you know catching both of those. I, I just wanted to ask you a simpler question. That picture you showed of the device in your test and the controllers, what's the controller made of? So yeah, is that a is that a custom board that you've do, do, do you have like a like is that have you got an open design for that or a bomb or a, you know, is there some way to reproduce those boards? Because the problem I have we haven't have with a lot of lab systems like this is someone does a one off design and then we can't buy them again. Ever, yeah, you know, the parts go out and no one keeps them going. So, the Linux automation people have talked about this previous conference. Should be available. Cool. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you very much. Now we've run out of time again. So thank you very much, uh, everybody, for your questions and everything. And we can hang around it a bit more if you want to have an informal chat around here. I think uh, the room is not going to get closed now, but video streaming will stop. Thank you very much. Have a good evening. I might see you at the, at the party tonight. <laughs>